Recently, a very strange story happened to me, the meaning of which I still do not understand. I am 27 years old, I have a daughter, and I have been divorced from her father for six years. I tried to date guys, we even moved in together a couple of times, but didn't get along and then split up. About a year ago, I met a nice guy, Sasha, who started to court me. But at that time, I was with my boyfriend, so we became friends. We lived close to each other, I lived on the boyfriend's property. We saw Sasha sometimes, we talked, but nothing serious, although I knew that he liked me. Some time went by and I realized with the guy I was living with that we didn't really get along. As my apartment was occupied, we agreed that for the time being we lived as roommates. We paid the rent together and as soon as they moved out, I moved in. In general, we parted amicably. Sasha found out about it. He started to take care of me more actively, offered to help. He was not embarrassed by my having a child. So we communicated for two months. Then he suggested that we spend the evening drinking wine, etc. I thought it wasn't a bad idea and went to his place on Friday. We talked and drank. I told him about my life and he told me about his. He said he didn't have a good childhood, often bumping into mercenary ladies and that I was different. I told him that I got married early, but my parents gave me everything. I came from a very wealthy family. They gave me an apartment and then I did everything on my own. I am financially independent and don't ask men for money. And this is the kind of girl he sees next to him, according to him. We kissed but did not get to sex. I told him that I did not sleep on the first date. He accepted it. Then we periodically saw each other, talked, went for walks together. I was going through a tough time in my life at the time. I was changing jobs, had to move into my own apartment, etc. I said I wasn't ready for a serious relationship and suggested just sex, but with a perspective for the future. I said that essentially, in terms of sex, the one condition was security. He was okay with that. We occasionally met at his place, kissing and caressing each other, but we never got to the actual sex because he forgot to buy protection. Although I'm more inclined to think that he delayed the moment because he wanted a serious relationship, at least that's what it seemed to me. He remembered that I was in love. He bought me slippers for his apartment. I could come over at any moment. And then the day came, I had to move into my apartment. My apartment was in the next town, half an hour away, but we sought each other less often. At the same time, we were communicating, although I mostly wrote and called him, but he answered immediately. From time to time, we sought each other. Sometimes he ran into me at work. We work in neighboring buildings on the same premises. I invited him to my place, but he categorically refused to go. Why is not clear, my daughter was away, we would not interfere. But he invited me to his place. At some point, he agreed to come to me on Friday. But because of his work, I had to postpone the meeting, just very late coming back. But the next day, I decided to surprise him and came. He was happy, we had coffee, he kissed me for a long time, it was obvious that he missed me. At some point things started to take a different turn and I was basically ready, but he pulled away, said that I had to leave or he would rape me. He had no protection and didn't want to do that now. It was obvious that he was very overexcited, but promised to come overnight the next day. I prepared for that day. I cleaned the apartment, cooked a few dishes, tried really hard, and he arrived. I went down to meet him. He was smiling, joking that I was flailing a lot and blushing. It wasn't too bad. I got him into the apartment and offered to go into the kitchen and asked if he would eat. He refused and asked for water. I offered to show him the apartment and he refused. Almost as soon as he stepped through the threshold of the apartment, he became very tense. My apartment is in the center of the city, not in Moscow, with a very good repair, which was made by my father. 
wood, fireplace, marble window sills. The apartment is good, but not really mine. My mother did everything to her taste, and I just did not ruin it, as most of the apartment is idle. And I've almost saved up for my own, which I will do for myself. And this one was planned to be rewritten to my daughter at her 18th birthday. But that's not the point. Sasha was acting strangely, staring at his phone, and was very tense. I offered coffee, he said yes, but he preferred instant coffee, even though I have a coffee machine. I offered to have dinner again, but he said that he had eaten at home. I had prepared so many dishes for nothing. I said that I'd better eat then. I offered him some wine to take the edge off. He agreed I poured a glass, ate a little, I hadn't really eaten anything all day, so I needed to, took the glass and sat down with him. He took just a sip of wine and went on drinking his coffee. I watched him, but he was just staring at his phone and watching some videos. I tried to pat him on the back like I used to do, but it was like he was electrocuted. I asked what happened, but he said he was surprised. But he was really tense though usually there was excitement, but we felt relaxed. He said he had a headache. I laughed, which is usually a woman's excuse, but he refused the pill. I drank another glass. He kept looking at his phone. I thought he was waiting for some action from me and tried to kiss me, but he pulled away and said that now was not the time. I was surprised, but I pulled away we sat in silence for about 15 minutes, and I asked him why he was so tense. Sasha said he wasn't comfortable in other people's space. I said it was my apartment, and there was nothing wrong. No strangers were coming, but he abruptly started packing up to go home. It was 11 o'clock outside, the rain was pounding, and he decided to leave. I stood at the front door and told him I wouldn't let him go out for the night. He got dressed anyway and told me to let him in. I asked him what I had done wrong. He just gently dismissed me and ran off. At least that's what it looked like from my side. I tried to call him, but got voicemail. I texted that if it was so uncomfortable, let's call a cab and go to him. All I got was no need. I was totally shocked. I called a friend and her husband. We sat and drank wine. The friend didn't understand Sasha's reaction. Her opinion was only that he saw the apartment and thought that my demands can't be met. Although I provide for myself and don't ask for money, and he knew it, and like a coward he fled. Her husband said that maybe I did something wrong or he was offended by a phrase or action, although I did not do anything special. He said that now it is better not to call Sasha. If he wants to explain himself, he will call. We sat together until two, and then we left, and I was still in a state of confusion. In the morning, we accidentally ran into each other at one stop. When he saw me, he frowned. I said hello, and so did he, but then he walked right away. Although I did not plan to clarify the relationship, he went to the other end of the bus and stared at his phone the whole way. And then he got off at the bus stop before our work. Basically, he just avoided me. I was ready for any outcome of the evening, sex talk or the opposite, that he would say that the relationship already does not want. But this is the reaction where without any explanation just ran away, not expected exactly. And why he did it, too, I do not understand. My husband named my daughter after his ex-girlfriend. I have been married for 10 years. A strong, happy, friendly family. My husband is reliable, smart, handsome, well-mannered. He does not earn much money, but he tries. Three children, a boy and two girls. I don't work. If we don't have enough money, my mother helps. She has her own business. My husband's parents have their own. Only they love not my husband, but his older brother more. They all work together, and it's always the older brother who gets the best bits of work. It upsets my husband, but I don't really care 
we have enough to live on. I don't understand how you can compete with your own brother. I'm an only child in the family, and I would really like to have brothers and sisters, but I only have cousins. Maybe that's why I've wanted so many children since I was a kid. Childbirth is easy for me. I get in shape quickly. I have never put on extra weight. I look attractive and take care of myself. My husband supported me in my desire to create a big family. He took care of kids with great pleasure. Everything was great with us. From my nieces, only that it is necessary to pay the mortgage for an apartment. We got tired of living in rented apartments and we bought a two bedroom in the city of my husband where we live and work. So we have to save money. And now at the stage of birth of our third daughter, there was an unpleasant surprise. My husband, as always, was happy about the baby, supported me during the pregnancy, everything was fine. And then when they began to decide how to name a girl, he offered to name her Sophia. This, they say, is his favorite name. I was not against it. So we named her. And then I accidentally found out that the name of his first love was also the name of another girl he liked a lot. I mean, I knew about these girls in his past, but I didn't know what their names were. My husband told me a lot about his first love, who he had been in a relationship with for five years before me, the first year after we got married. And then they broke up. I think she traded him for someone else. She was his first, and I was his second in terms of intimacy. He was attracted to a few other girls, but never got to a relationship or had intimacy with them. One of them was particularly memorable for her cockroaches and unpredictable nature. He kept saying that he was glad I was so calm and reliable, not like her. She still told him she loved him first, but he rejected her because he had already met me. Well, and she already congratulated him after our wedding on the holidays. He showed no interest in communicating, and she stopped writing. My husband didn't want to tell me their names. But the other day, his brother's wife let it slip. While talking to my husband about our daughter, she remembered that his first girlfriend's name was Sophia too, and that it was such a rare name. He replied that he had a Snijana at work too, so it wasn't that rare. I then asked him what kind of Sophia he had at work. He replied, the one who confessed her love for me, and I turned her down. Now I want and think that one of those girls he has not forgotten still remembers and loves. I wanted to get some advice. From the outside, you can still see better which of these two could be. And is it really possible that a man named his daughter after an ex? I thought that only women do that. And then why didn't he name his first daughter after an ex? Doesn't that mean that he is now having an affair with this girl again? I am tormented by jealousy. I do not want to talk to my husband yet. I just hate the name of my youngest daughter, but you can't call her by any other name.